how does this trans you know how do we think this transition model creates change in the world or, or creates the change we want to see, as in hopefully healthy systems? Uh, how does how does transition do that, uh, and and how can we describe that? How can we then start to identify the pieces of the model and the, the whole the way the way it works in a way that we can then start to engage with researchers who can help us to verify or um, strengthen uh, what we do and how we do it. Okay, does that, does that make sense? Yeah. So. We're focusing this, this second intention of the day. There is on specific elements of the transition process, how we see them contributed in creating change. That's, what, that's the piece we're going to now. We might get to the kind of wider context. We'll see. So the first thing I'd like to start, start out with is, is um, this, this kind of uh, where we, this is something we got to fairly recently, um, this model of how we think transition networks, so the, how the kind of network of transition works. So sort of, so this is a kind of large-scale uh, global um, sense of how how transition is uh, working, and on it we've put um, these words in red, which are the uh, strategic aims of uh, transition network. So these are words like flourish, balance, catalyze, evolve, support, communicate, and broaden. Okay, so. These, these are the kind of edges as we see it. These are kind of how uh, transition is, is creating edge with different parts of the system in order to create change. Okay, does that, does that make sense? Yep, okay. So as Transition Network, we're, we're, we're making edge with and we are uh, engaging with transition initiatives. This TI means transition initiatives. And in that process, we are communicating with them. We're supporting them to do transition. Uh, we're catalyzing. So we're, uh, the catalyzing uh, function is, is to try to draw people into transition. So it's kind of uh, putting out a message um, that we hope people will engage with. Um, and we're also evolving the model. So in, in the process of doing transition, we're also evolving what this process of transition is. So there's a kind of evolving process. Um, we're also catalyzing with mainstream institutions as Transition Network. We're engaging with them in a kind of dialogue to try to get them on board. Um, we're also interacting with them and communicating with, with them. So we're in, in, ter in terms of interaction with them, we are hoping to um, influence or in some way uh, engage them in this question of like where we think we're going, uh, is what you're doing healthy, can, can, can you help us to create uh, health in, in sort of some of the wider systems uh, of our um, of our culture, but we're also engaging with the mainstream. Mainstream by that I, I probably mean um, everything except the early adopters, who have really been the main people who have, who have kind of grasped the whole transition thing. So the kind of everything from the early majority to the late majority, which is probably most people who haven't really engaged with transition. So we're hoping to broaden, broaden the appeal of transition to reach out to more people, uh, people in different stages of, of change process, but also catalyze and communicate with them. Um, we also have a sense that we, we also are balanced, we, as, as, as the, the organization itself, we have two functions we call balance and flourish, um, which we, we aim to create a flourishing organization, so we put uh, a lot of, uh, some degree of time, resource and effort ourselves into ensuring that we are resourced and, and uh, we're able to um, stay uh, focused and um, we're able to explore whatever comes up for us as we do this process, as we, as we work in these very challenging times and conditions. Um, and the kind of sense of balance, which uh, Sophie very much alluded to in her uh, system there about this kind of balance of active uh, and um, being. So the sort of uh, active doing will outer and then the kind of um, receptive being inner process. So we're, we, that, that's another function of how we operate. Um, and we hope that that will 
so, you know, some of that is, is also will influence both the mainstream and, and transition initiatives. Um, yeah, and, 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 and in that process we're evolving the model. So that's kind of how we conceive ourselves as working and how, how we create this kind of um, way in which we can engage both uh, the, the kind of personal scale to the community scale to the cultural wider scale. Yes? Um, I was just going to expand, just say one thing about the, you've got the TIs and the sort of communication uh, support involved. So, I mean, one of the things that we're also exploring, it feels more than just doing that as a two way T transition network to the TI, it's about how as a movement can we create that sense of uh, support, communication, yeah. etc., across uh, the wider community bit. Yeah, that's, that, uh, yeah. That's so true. So, so, so yeah. So there's a kind of something, something like this going on. Yeah. So that sort of peer to peer support and uh, and communication. Mm -hmm. yeah. And surely also from then opening to mainstream. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And to the institutions as well. Yeah. We well, <laughs> it, that's an interesting question. How much uh, an individual TI is going to uh, in, um, engage with the institutions? Um, it kind of feels like. If, if um, as, as the kind of transition network, we can engage with UK government, for instance, whereas it's, it's kind of unrealistic that a, a, an individual initiative will, but it's, it's also possible. I mean, I know you guys in Bristol Pound have been to talk to the Bank of England and, you know, <laughs> things like that. So, so yeah, I'm sure that... And collectively, the might, it feels like it is useful to have at least the idea that the might, it doesn't all need to come through the network. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, like, it's such feels like such an funny point that's come up in a way because the uh, there's a there's a way of conflating all transition issues in together. Like, so if you're going to grow um, food in your back garden or you're going to run a local currency scheme, and actually there's a totally different thing. And so sometimes a transition initiative will relate directly to other institutions and become an institution in itself mm -hmm. and other times they'll remain relatively small individual community things mm -hmm. yeah you know, and, and i don't think that comes out often in the way that people talk about transition and transition initiatives that actually we've got some very different scale of things going on <coughs> that different have that have a very different quality mm -hmm. right joe just thinking also how the transition network relates to other networks that support similar groups but aren't necessarily mm -hmm. transition groups. So yeah. the same for sustainable energy, the mm -hmm. communities network, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. and that, that kind of thing. Yeah. How the learning uh, yes. between all those organisations is <coughs> able to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that's interact, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Which also is two ways <coughs> that we're... Yeah. And it's not just mainstream institutions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So other fellow travellers? <laughs> So there's something, something there about doing all sorts of ways. <laughs> Dry hours. <isn't it? laughs> okay. Can I talk about Sam and, and Jules and then we'll move on? Yeah. Well, I just wondered how, I mean, it always seems to me that with transitions, the sort of inner and the outer stuff, mm -hmm. and they often feel a bit different and could, could be more integrated perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wonder how that maps onto here. Is there any distinction in the world? Uh, maybe not. Uh, it's, it's I, haven't, I haven't tried. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, certainly this is, is the both of these are probably um, much more inner. Um, and, you know, in terms of catalyzing and communicating and broadening, I think we're, we're attempting anyway to do it both uh, in inner and outer uh, and probably uh, not doing a very good job of it. But. Balance was specifically that within the organisation, I, I would say. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Yeah. yeah. How do we how do we make sure that we're doing both and that they need to be yeah. Okay. It's yeah. probably not an intentional thing, but the transition network is very big. <laughs> the transition initiatives are probably much bigger ultimately. Than yeah, I mean, I mean, in terms of the size, you know, you, you, you know, yeah, I'd rather have to draw several hundred or thousands or whatever on here just to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm thinking the point that transition network is probably used in two different senses, mm -hmm. as, the, as, the, as the central hub, if you like, 
yeah. and as the whole network, which yeah. includes the communication. Yeah, yeah. and that's, a, that's an important distinction. Okay, last one and then we'll move on. I could ask it later. It just coming to see this relatively new to the transition movement, it's interesting to me the words that you have there, your aims, and they're very positive, wonderful words like catalyze and flourish and interact. But if I think about mainstream institutions, I know that change doesn't, a lot of change comes from, you know, you can model change and provide solutions to problems if the moment's right. But um, also, you know, change very rarely happens just through persuasion or evidence or good ideas alone. You need a body of countervailing pressure. And so I think, to me, it's interesting, it's just a reflection. There isn't words about power in that sense there. The transition movement sort of I've learned this morning is, is empowering people to take within their, their power within, their power to do things, their power with people, but there's something about the power the mainstream movement students have over us and the structural influences that I don't see reflected in your strategy, but just a reflection. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, no, I like all good, words. Good, good reflection. Okay. Okay, I'd like to move on now to this, this second bit we, we call the transition animal. So now we're, now we're really, um, I'd like to bring us to, you know, from the kind of large picture, um, and we haven't really put on here a strategy for change. Um, this is just the kind of reflection of how we see some of the flows of information and ideas and all that working. Uh, and, you know, it's a very good question. But uh, I'd like to, to, for us to focus, and, and really this is where we're going to go for the rest of the day, is to, is to take a view uh, of um, the early stages of transition. So um, what do we know about this early stage of transition? Uh, what can we say is working? What can we say may, maybe isn't working so well? Uh, what pieces might be missing? And we're going to do this in a very particular way, uh, and, and I'll, again, I'll, I'm going to introduce this, this next piece, this matrix, uh, where, where we're going to go after lunch. But I just want to get, you know, how, how we've conceptualized the early stages of transition, and, and then I just want to introduce this matrix to say, well, this is how we're going to, uh, this, is, this is the process which we are going to use to, uh, to start to map um, how we see this model working. Okay, does that, does that make sense? Am I making sense? So, this is the kind of starting out phase of the transition companion. Uh, and I think these six areas probably uh, include um, just about all uh, the ingredients in that starting out. And um, possibly a few other in the, the sort of next phase, if, if people are familiar with the transition companion, there's a kind of five stages that are, are um, proposed in the transition companion. Um, and for the purposes of today, like I said, we're going to focus on this, this early starting out phase because I think we, we think that this is a kind of, um, we call it, not, not quite a hologram, but a, a, this, is, this is a, uh, a process that is repeated fractal. in a fractal, fractal perhaps. So that is a process that's for, produced in, in the other phases. So uh, what we think a transition initiative needs to work well, to work successfully, um, it needs to sit on, 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 on these four legs of this, this animal. Um, and those four legs are uh, networks and partnerships. So we, we feel that it, it needs to network and partnership well within, within the community. Uh, it needs to work with other groups well and, and de develop good working relationships with them. Um, the, the groups um, in transition, so in a transition group, there's often an initiating group. And then once an initiative gets big enough, then that kind of expands into maybe other working groups or project groups. So how those groups work is an important piece of transition. If those groups aren't working well, if the technology is not there in the initiative to know how to set agendas, to create intention, um, uh, to, uh, to resolve conflict when it arises, um, to create good meetings and, and processes, um, then that transition group is probably gonna struggle. Um, because just about everything in transition is done in, in a group. So, so that whole technology around effective groups, what makes groups effective and what, what doesn't, is feel, we feel is a really important piece. 
Awareness raising is often talked about as the engine of transition, so this is what we need to do. We need to create uh, a, an awareness of the need for change and also an awareness of, of where we might be going, sort of alternative visions of the future um, that, is, that sort of gives us a kind of a, a third way, the kind of, you know, if you look at the current economic debate, there's sort of, uh, we either have austerity or, or we have the Keynesian kind of behind the pump and get, get the growth model going. Um, and we've got a, a transition, I think, has a vision of another, another way um, based on um, resilient local communities. So, so awareness raising is, is encompasses vision, um, and it also is pointing to some of the, the unhealthy bits of the system that, that, that creates the reason why we need to do transition. So, um, and it's the way that you engage the, your community, and it's a way of bringing more people in um, to the initiative. So again, we feel that's a, an important piece. Um, and the last thing is, the last leg of it is, is reskilling and practical projects that um, if transition groups are just talking shops, um, it, the energy soon goes out of it. There's, um, there seems to be, uh, in most transition groups, there's, a, there's an enormous pressure to, to do things, to get things done, to create community gardens, start putting in place some of these pieces of community resilience that, that people see the need for, um, starting to create some of the jobs and opportunities that the current crisis is throwing up. Um, so yeah, so and, and learning skills, learning new skills, um, uh, uh, pushing our comfort zones um, in a, in a very practical way. So those are the four legs of the dog or the animal. Um, but there's a, there's a couple other pieces that we feel are are important, and I mentioned one already, which is vision. So um, there we transition presents a uh, I think a very different vision of of where we think we're going than um, than than certainly our, our mainstream. So and that seems to be an important piece. If you don't have a vision, if you can't present people with a vision of where we're going, then it's very hard for them to take in some of the unhealthy and very painful bits. Somebody mentioned that earlier about you know we we are in a place where a lot of what we're doing in our system is very painful. And if we can produce a vision of to say, well, this is where we could get to, that is not uh, the current system and, and, and that could get us out of this very painful place, it provides a compelling um, uh, a story for people to, to interact with um, and become part of. Um, and then uh, the, the last bit is there's something about celebration and values. Um, and this is, this is the, the dog has its, its, its tail. Wagging. Um, some people think these are a bit close to this this end of the door, um, but um, there's a sense that if, if you're not celebrating, um, uh, then there's um, it, it doesn't it doesn't provide the, the kind of necessary um, I don't know the the, the 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 engine for going through processes and then celebrating what you've done and then um, giving you the oomph to, to carry on. So there's something about celebrating and. Uh, celebrating each other, celebrating the place you live in, uh, and also the work you're doing. And then uh, a lot of people want to put a heart. We originally didn't put a heart in it, um, which I think is a, was a, probably an omission. But the heart's gotten put in. There's something about caring and values in there as well um, that, that we feel is, is necessary. Because we're not just transitioning to anything. We have a, there is a certain value and sense of values that we have um, that, uh, again, I think we've, we've tried to define um, in that sense of how. So that's the kind of basics of the model. Um, any questions or any comments? Oh, I had the idea that the heart is caring and then, you know, because this is what, what's missing still, that what we rely on, and then really that just can uh, change towards the heart. <laughs> And I have another um, um, amendment. Um, it's what I see in the very early stage is the um, need for time and space. And I can't, I don't know if it's in the groups because you mainly focused on group skills. So, um, oh, somehow I, I feel when we start transition group, it create time and space for vision and reflection. But then to maintain the transition group, we still need more time and more space. Uh -huh. and this, and yeah. this, I don't I can't see it in the model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Speaking as the um, on the the diagram box arrow says the kind of influence and catalyze of the mainstream institutions, and I don't see that on there either. I see the kind of vision and it's like hmm, where does it go? It's networking partnerships a little bit, but it's more kind of influencing up um, either as an individual transition group or the transition network. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to lick people. That's a really interesting point. We were, we were uh, thinking yesterday when we were reflecting about how one, wondering whether these strategic aims were because we, we do it, it does tend to be a kind of a was it the word fractal, fractal that you know that, that's what happening locally is also happening in the wider. Although, you know, there are also emergent properties that happen at bigger scale that, that wouldn't necessarily happen at small scale. So it's a very interesting question you raise, and I, I, don't, um, I think we need to kind of think a bit more about that. And yeah, I might have some different conclusions. Who else was there? Was that? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, Kate. You were... Thanks. Um, and maybe sort of extending the kind of canine sort of vision of that or analogy a bit far, but got this great sort of picture of, you know, a dog trotting off, you know, the way that dogs always look like they know where they're going. And I sort of wonder if um, this animal needs a bit more listening and maybe actually the way in which dogs, as they go along, keep sniffing to make sure that they know that they are keeping on track. So in a way, it's the kind of yeah. feedback mechanism mm -hmm. which those continual checks as, are we, you know, do we know where we're going? Mm -hmm. Actually, are mm -hmm. we going in the right direction? Am I on the mm -hmm. right path? And okay, you could extend that and start thinking about how dogs mark their territory, but we obviously don't want to go there. But, you know. Well, maybe. Well, they chase, they they chase, chase their tails, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> they chase their tails. They're slipping the lampposts <laughs> every so often just to check. I suppose that coming back to Gaysa, isn't it? There's a kind of yeah. sensing and then there's yeah. a reflection. Exactly. The and all of that is really important as part of the feedback. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that we're listening. Sorry. Yes, we're listening. listening. Mm -hmm. They've got ears and they need yeah. to be using them. It's not just about, yeah. right, head down, here we go. Because, you know, yeah. you might head in the wrong direction. Yeah. Okay. okay, Tom? I mean, my comment was uh, relevant to Gaysa's Joe's answer. Kate, some of as well. And, uh, you know, the extend the picture and take into account some of these things by thinking of an animal in a habitat so you start to think like what are we feeding the dog is it getting everything it needs and, you know, what's it what are its relationships with uh, uh, with other groups with context how it's behaving and it's interesting it's shifted from being a dog to an animal so i'm wondering are transition groups different types of animals and um, do they change at different stages so on or are different the different reason why we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're we've kind of gone to a lizard we've got this this lizard uh, thing that, that we're using now it's, it's just because we got some we, we got some feedback from people to say that from certain cultures dog mm -hmm. is something that is unclean mm -hmm. so particularly muslim so we've changed it to a lizard i mean you know it, <laughs> So uh, this, is, this is one of the problems of being a global movement.